Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Learning Made Free where I create videos which not only help you upskill your business analyst and product manager skills but may also help you crack your next interview. Today's video is about data quality. You know what when I started making this video I searched for the meaning of quality on the web. Though I have worked as a design engineer during my early career days and having conducted many quality inspections I had my own understanding of what quality means. And the first definition that came across the search is reproduced here on the screen. The standard of something as measured against other things of similar kind. The degree of excellence of something. Though this definition is valid, to add to it my understanding of quality, it is a measurement of closeness of the outcome achieved when compared to the committed standards or specifications. So you commit to something to provide to the customer or the end user. How close is your delivery to that commitment? That is how quality is measured. So there is my another video, an article where I talk about the trusted data, how data influences our day to day decision making. And we assume that information that we are getting is accurate. The price we see on the web, the product that we order or the information that is being displayed on any web page when you open any website. The information should be accurate. So if you focus on the expectation in the statement just which I just said, it will be easier to for you to understand the real hidden meaning of data quality amongst all the complex jargons that we encounter in our everyday work life. So data quality can be defined as a measure of how well the data set conforms to the intended use or purpose as specified. So we as the data custodian, if somebody is telling that, you know, specifying that this is the intended use, this is the purpose, this is how data should be used. So data quality is how well I conform to what is committed or what is promised. And a data set can be considered as high quality data if it is fit for the intended use and accurately conforms to the defined set of standards. But you know, there is one very important thing which everyone should understand that for the same set of data, different end users may have different sets of expectations. Like a customer data set may be termed as high quality for sales, but maybe due to some issues, it may be termed as low quality data for finance. It just depends on how the data is getting consumed by your end user. It all depends on the set of attributes in use and the expectations of those respective user groups. So now let's talk about the dimensions of data quality. So what you see on screen are the six main dimensions of data quality. And the first one is completeness. Completeness, this dimension measures the availability of the minimal set of attributes required by the end user to meet the business objectives. Remember in the previous slide, I told some of the attributes may be required by finance, but may not be needed by sales or maybe sales may need some different set of attributes. So if you have attributes ABC, which are required by finance and available, the data is of high quality for them, but the dimensions the attributes that are needed by sales, if not present, those are not complete, then it becomes a low quality data for sales. The second important dimension is accuracy. This dimension measures the correctness of the data that can be measured by verifiable resources. The accuracy of data is super important to arrive at key business decisions. The third element is consistency. This dimension is the measure of whether the same set of data is uniform across different systems. The data has to be uniform. It has to be consistent across various systems across your organization. The fourth element is validity. Whether this dimension or this measures the adherence to the defined set of rules and standards, whether this data is valid or not, or if it is invalid with the set of rules and standards that are laid in the organization. The next element is uniqueness. This dimension, as the name suggests, is the measure of redundancy of the same record in the data set. 
high quality data from the lens of uniqueness should be deduplicated. It should not have any redundant entities or duplicates in the system. The last element is timeliness. This dimension is the measure of two things, availability when needed and also of how current or updated the data is. Now coming to data quality management. Data quality management is a set of practices or discipline which is aimed at maintaining high quality data in an organization. These cover all the aspects right from data acquisition to setting up the processes on that data, distribution and analysis. What you see on screen are the five pillars of data quality management. The first and most important element is people. Identifying the set of people based on skills, knowledge and experience to ensure the process of DQM works effectively, to ensure that high quality data is delivered to the end users. The second element is on data profiling. Data profiling is nothing but identifying and investigating data quality issues. Whether there are duplicates or the data is inconsistent or inaccurate or also checks on completeness. Third pillar is defining DQ, defining data quality. As an organization, one should define the data quality rules as per the business requirements. And those should also align to the goals of the organizations or the consumption goals. The fourth pillar is reporting. How you monitor, how you have the set of metrics to monitor the DQ issues so that you capture what are the issues that are happening in your data and you fix the concerned areas and you continuously improvise. You continuously remove those uh, data quality issues and deliver high quality data. The last is data repair. So when it, we talked about reporting where you have a metric to measure or monitor the data quality issues, but before you solve them, one should identify the root cause and determining the best way for the data remediation, how to fix those issues and the best efficient method to implement the data repair process. Now we understand the dimensions of data quality and the pillars of data quality management. Now we'll talk about the process of defining the data quality rules. At a high level, there are three steps to defining data quality rules. Step one is documenting requirements with tech descriptions. And I mentioned, as I mentioned earlier as well in other videos as well, for any process definition or defining your delivery, the key thing is defining the priority. And the same thing goes with data quality is to define the priority with associated DQ rules and the data attributes, the attributes based on the business consumption. The second step would be translation of these rule set, these ingredients into a machine readable validation rules. You have a functional requirement and how you build a code for it. The third one, the third step is implementing these data quality rules and continuously review them by set of metrics. But you must be thinking, what are the sources of poor data quality? One of the sources is human errors. And this is one of the most common causes where you know the lack of training, tools, motivation, or other distractions at work result in typos, missing details, or data entry into wrong fields. So you have the, some data which is put in a different field. Human errors are one of the primary causes of poor data quality. The second is data migration and conversion. So when you are updating your legacy systems and you try to migrate your data into new systems, and while migrating your data, sometimes it results in data quality issues due to mapping errors. Imagine a name key is mapped with a phone key and it results in data quality errors during data migration. Or sometimes when you are migrating data or you are merging data between two systems, you may also have some duplicates in the system 
where you didn't have the right match and merge algorithm work. Third is transformational errors. So these are the errors caused while transforming the data from one form to the other to meet the different system requirements. Like we talked about migrating data from legacy system, sometimes to, for the consumption system, you need to transform the data based on the system requirement, like the dates in a different format, phone numbers or zip codes. So this is also one of the primary causes of poor data quality. The third is integration issues. Sometimes there are issues around integration between two systems, different the various supply chain sources of data, and it results in data silos and availability of valuable data at the point of business consumption. So there are integration issues. There is a source system, but in the consuming system, the data is not flowing in the way it was supposed to behave. The last source of poor data quality is outdated data. So I like I mentioned, you know, data is time sensitive. Timeliness is one of the key dimensions of data quality. Now changing addresses, contact details of customers, changing product features with time, some enhancements. If these are not updated, this results in poor business outcomes. And this is also one of the primary and most important causes of poor data quality. What are the impacts of poor data quality? One is productivity loss. So in the absence of reliable data and you know manual data checks and corrections severely impact decision making. If you don't have a reliable data, you cannot make decisions accurately or with efficiency. And there's a lot of productivity loss at that end. Compliance issues. Any breach of compliance of data loss due to data quality issues around the use of personal data can attract hefty fines. There are various examples where around the globe in various big organizations as well, where the organizations were heavily penalized due to compliance issues. Poor resilience. The organizations with poor data are less resilient. It was very evident during COVID times when quicker adaptations were needed. But because of poor data, organizations had very, very low resilience. Revenue losses. Inaccuracies in customer contacts info or product info are bad for any business and may result in revenue losses. If you have the right contact info of customers, you can have your marketing outreach programs delivered with accuracy, else those are lost customers because you are not reaching out to the right point of contact. Missed opportunities. Poor data may result in inaccurate market insights and hamper lead generation and may impact sales pipeline negatively. So you have inaccurate data. You're not able to judge the market requirements or insights correctly. And your lead generation is working with the old set of data or the incorrect data. And it impacts your sales pipeline. Reputational damage. Once a damage is done, it imbibes in, you carry that baggage always with you. Poor data quality may lead to bad customer support. Duplicate incorrect marketing outreach, this increases or increase in email churn. So you're reaching out to your customer, but you're not aware about what are the past purchases. Your marketing content is not accurate. You're not being relevant. That is how this causes reputational damage. This creates a bad customer experience. Incorrect analysis. Now, analysis to arrive at business strategies, forecasts, if you don't have the right data, how can you be accurate? How can you have that right decision making? Missing or incorrect data in foundation is always, always unreliable. Poor customer experience. Customer frustrations due to incorrect purchases info inaccuracies in service, misspelled names, duplicate communications. These are which create a poor customer experience. Imagine you don't have the visibility to the customer purchase history and you reach out to customer and you try to sell a product which customer already owns. It creates a bad customer experience and it thrifts those customers away from your product or your brand. 
if any organization is running on high quality data it has a huge impact on the organization how it impacts it helps in better decision making if the organization has good quality data the decision making will be very accurate it will be very efficient faster and realistic it is like a strong foundation that helps deliver high confidence decisions with dec with confidence the executives can give those decisions they can deliver those decisions which can help the organization save from cost overheads of those errors that may incur due to incorrect data or a low quality data you have better business outcomes based on those better decision making the high quality data gives a better view of the customers partners vendors etc in the case of customer a good quality data may mean knowing the requirements well knowing the entire customer purchase history knowing what the customer is anticipating for us to reach out to them to anticipate their needs to create that view where we can cross sell and upsell our products and for prospects it may mean better targeted marketing campaigns based on customer needs resulting in increased conversion of those prospects to customer this reduces your customer acquisition costs and if you have the right data the organization always has a competitive advantage organizations who have good quality data have a better clear picture of the market dynamics their data driven actions results in higher customer satisfaction and strong goodwill associated with the brand such organizations certainly have a competitive advantage amongst their rivals against their rivals by accurate predictions of the market needs thank you for watching the video on data quality hope you liked the video and if you did like like share and subscribe and also please drop in a comment if you want me to create a video on any of the business analyst on product management skills thank you bye bye